Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are live from Miramar, Florida. This is Glenn Stout. I'm here with Ryan Stout, and we've got live wire on the field tonight for the first time. This is high school game day by HSPN Sport, produced by Bleacher.com. We've got the Miramar Patriots hosting tonight the St. Thomas Aquinas. Miramar Patriots are number eight. St. Thomas Aquinas comes in at number four. I'm going to take a look at some of the scholar athlete tonight for the Patriots. That is Brandon Morris. Brandon has a 5.3 GPA. He's a super scholar athlete. Our impact players tonight, number six, Damari Simpkin. We saw Damari a couple weeks ago come in second half of the Deerfield, excuse me, the Heritage game. Damari Simpkin, 43 attempts. He's got 19 completions for 225 yards, two touchdowns and two interceptions. And he is the leading passer in 8A12. He also has 10 attempts rushing for 130 yards and three TDs. They're gonna have to keep an eye on Damari Simpkins tonight. Our second impact player for Miramar is Jeff Hill, number seven. Jeff is a cornerback. He's a lockdown corner. Got number one cornerback, Triak Cole. Triak returned a punt last week from Plantation. 75 yards and a 42 to nothing romp against the Plantation Colonels. And now bringing it over to the St. Thomas Impact Player side. Number 14, Jake Rizzo, quarterback for the Raiders. Jake is 12 attempts. He has seven completions for 127 yards and one touchdown. Jake sits number two passer in 7A15. He's also rushed three times for 22 yards. Then we've got number 22, Jordan Scarlett, transfer from University. 18 carries for 131 yards, three touchdowns. Watch out for Jordan Scarlett if he catches the edge and Cole isn't around, it's going to be a problem. And last but not least, big number 70, 97, Nick Bosa. He's one of the biggest tackles in the league, and he's very impactful at both Bosco last week. He was a shining light. It kept the defense on the field with three sacks behind the line of scrimmage. Jordan Scarlett, Jordan Scarlett, back to Jordan. He had one reception for 46 yards. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble. We are here tonight down in Miramar, Florida. This is high school game day. High school football primetime powered by HSPN, Miramar versus St. Thomas. We'll be right back. He's going to snap the He's at the 50. He's at the 40. Can he stay on his feet? Back to live action, high school sports, Saturday night. A lot of college football on today. A lot of big games on today, so we hope you're tuned in to see some high school football. We're getting ready for bringing teams out, getting ready for the national anthem. We're getting ready to rumble down here in South Florida. I don't know about you, but I'm fired up. I'll tell you right now, we've got some hardest working bloggers in South Florida. Those guys are with us. And they're driving tons of traffic. So if you're with us and you're coming through Bleacher.com, we appreciate you coming. Watch us tonight. Bleacher's graphics. Did all the graphics tonight. Also, if you're watching us through FloridaGridironPeps.com, we appreciate all your fans watching as well. Don't forget, up in 
Gainesville, Florida, Florida High School Football. That's FloridaHSFootball.com. The job up there working it harder than anybody in the nation. Thanks for your fans watching tonight. And a new one with us, Michael from FloridaVarsity.com, part of Rivals. He is a Florida group for Rivals. Glad to have your fans aboard, Michael. As always, this production is brought to you by the Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation Media Group. And we bring it to you with Stealth Rating, the only rating and ranking service that rates student athletes based on character, athletics, and grades. And last but not least, playingtherecruitinggame.com, taking a business approach to the recruiting process. If you've got student athletes that need to learn how to play the recruiting game, you need to go to playingtherecruitinggame.com. As you can see out on the field, got the Marines out there. It's a great American Rival Series, which we appreciate. We are excited to be here. Little rain today, thank goodness. Well, a lot of rain today, as a matter of fact. And thank goodness it stopped. We've got umbrellas. We've got ponchos. We've got everything going on. I'm in the press box. Cam's over here working at hard for Miramar, one of the best guys down here in South Florida. And, folks, if you're not familiar with it, Miramar High School is right on the border of Dade County. We appreciate you being with us tonight. The announcer is going to give the seniors announcements as they come out. Kicker, St. Thomas. 4.2 GPA. I'll bring it to you as Cam is bringing it to the fans in the stands. We're going to have something special for you tonight. We're going to have live, wired up on the sideline, Lazaro Suarez, and he's going to be down there giving us reaction. First time ever that we're going to be having him wired up, ready to go for you. I want to introduce to you Ryan Stout. He's down below me, and uh, I see you're sweating a little bit, Ryan. It's still warm out there. Absolutely. Wouldn't want to be in any other place right now. This is high school football at its best. you got the worst weather going on. We're in South Florida. You would think it'd be sunny outside. The sun is trying to creep through the clouds right now, but yes, sir, I got a nice bit of sweat running down my back right now, down my <laughs> face. Shoot, maybe in my shoes. I'm running all over the place, but I would not want to be anywhere else right now. But here in the stands with this young Miramar JV football team, always showing their support to the Miramar Patriots. And once again, it is great to be on here with you. And it's great to be back in the booth. It's been a while, it feels like. It's only been one week, but supposed to catch a game this past Thursday. Unfortunately, had a hiccup. But, hey, that's not stopping us. Once we're in, we are in. And what we're going to do right now, I see, we're going to get into the national anthem. So we are going to show our respects, as you do as well.
south side of the field, you're going to see a road. It's a little side road. All right, let's get ready to play some football. The National Anthem was just played. Raiders are getting ready to come out. Patriots are getting ready to come out. Getting ready to rumble. This is big time football from South Florida. Thank you if you're just now joining us. You're watching High School Game Day. Brought to you by Bleacher. Produced by HSPN High School Programming Network. High School Football Primetime tonight. The Miramar Patriots, ranked number eight, versus the number four ranked St. Thomas Aquinas Raiders. Let's get ready to rumble, and we'll bring it out to the field real soon, as soon as we get this coin toss. Number 97, Nick Boza, and number 75, Richard Desir Jones. Your captains for the Miramar Patriots are number two, Alex Anderson. Number four, Joe Diaz. Keep it good luck tonight, folks, on some of those impact players. They are going to come strong and they're going to come hard. You've got Simpkin, number six. Came in the second half a couple weeks ago when we were down here for the Heritage game. They lost that one in a close one in the last few seconds of the game. Yes, but they he's did. a huge impact player and has a big arm. Yes, they did. Had a chance to hang out with him this week. Went out to practice, hung out with Coach Strout and the Miramar Patriots. Once again, a great coaching staff, great team, a great week of preparation. Um, unfortunately, the day I went out, Damari was a little bit under the weather. As we could say, he uh, had his helmet on. He had a chance to uh, run around a little bit, but try to keep him healthy. Um, but so far, I mean, he's had a great week of practice, um, as well as the other impact players that we have that we showed you guys, Tyreek Cole, uh, Jeff Hill, both defensive backs that are outstanding when it comes to technique. Um, I believe um, both of these athletes are being highly recruited. Um, Jeff Hill, I don't, I don't know if he's um, committed to anyone right now, but I know Tyreek is committed. Uh, we'll get that to you as soon as possible. But these gentlemen, I mean, both of these student athletes, great athletes, and they're getting recruited by national colleges all over the nation. Yes, Ryan, you're exactly right. And those two corners are going to have to keep an eye on this quarterback, Jake Rizzo, because he can pick it apart. He's ready to settle down this week. He's got quite an arm and a quite presence with an offense. A well-coached team, Coach Rocco, has got them well-disciplined team. They'll come out tonight, I'm sure, because they've got a chip on their back. They were up at playing Bosco up in Jersey, and they didn't like losing that one. But you better keep an eye on those corners. Better keep an eye on Jordan Scarlett, number 22, the running back. Because I can guarantee you, if he hits the edge, he's going to take it to the house. And yes, he will. And of course, it, go yes, ahead. Yes, he will, Jordan Scarlett. If you haven't seen him before, you're going to see him tonight. And what an outstanding athlete on the field and off the field. Uh, former product of the university school. Um, outstanding academically. Outstanding on the field is a product not only of university school, but a great coach, Coach Harriet, that took his talents um, to the collegiate level, as you all know. But you are, you're you're going to see a running back tonight. And if they can't throw the ball because the balls may be a little wet, St. Thomas isn't going to have a problem giving it to their top running back, Scarlett. You got that right, Ryan. And I know they're ready to rumble. The field is a little muddy. We've got to look over here at the Miramar Patriots getting ready to bust through the field. St. Thomas Aquinas, they're over there jumping around. And here come the Patriots. Next out of the St. Thomas Aquinas Raiders. And there they come. High school primetime on HSPN. Brought to you by Bleacher. Yes, sir, and we just got a call from Lazaro getting into the game, running a little late. We won't we won't get on him too bad, but uh, he's getting into the game right now. We'll bring that sideline reaction to you as soon as possible. We'll get him mic'd up, get him down on the field. I know we love that game speed. It's one thing being up in the box and being able to see what's going on in the field, but that game speed's a whole different story, especially with both these programs tonight. Well, here's another quick shout-out. To all those guys that have all those fans looking for us tonight, FloridaVarsity.com. Appreciate you bringing those fans in. Real quickly, FloridaHighSchoolFootball.com. We appreciate your fans watching tonight as well. Florida Gridiron Peps, we all appreciate your fans. 
and Bleacher.com. We appreciate all of you fans watching tonight as well. It's going to be a good one, folks. St. Thomas Aquinas set to kick off the ball to the Patriots. And we're going to kick this off the way we do it live here on HSPN. We got 12-0-0. Zero, zero. zero for the Patriots. Zero for St. Thomas. It's going to be one heck of a game. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you stay tuned all night long because we're bringing the action to you here live. You got Gregory McGray from Miramar. Deep to receive. as well as number 27, Franklin. Caught by Franklin, he takes off over the 10, trying to pick up the wall. Penalty marker is down, and he doesn't make it out to about the 10 yard line. He may have just wanted to let that one go out the back of the end zone. I don't know if he got to get to at least a 20. Yeah, and he tried. He he went sideways for about 15 yards. You're not giving too. You're not giving any good field position. Um, once you get out there, uh, Damari, he's a great quarterback. The field's a little wet though, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, it's not raining right now, but it has been raining all day down here in South Florida. So we will see what this spread type offense um, is going to bring to the table. Second down, and I'll tell you, he didn't get back. Almost got a safety. Number five, Durant. And I'm not sure what they were doing on that call. And the refs are going to blow it dead. Gonna see what we got going on here on the field. Okay, we're back to action. Run that clock. Doesn't pick up many. No, he doesn't. Maybe two yards. Pretty predictable. Um, coming out the first couple plays of the game. Gonna run the ball, see what we can do on the ground. But um, this is the opportunity for the offense to really take advantage of uh, what they're going to see out of St. Thomas for the rest of the game. Uh, the first half, you know, they have a pretty good idea of what they're going to come out with defensive-wise. But um, this offense, they're going to see what they got going on. And once again, they're going to put it down the throat of the St. Thomas Aquinas, and they aren't getting anywhere. Got some guys. Uh, some good defensive guys in there jumping on the dog pile at the end, and I think that's going to, yes, it is. It's going to drop a three, three and out, and the punter is going to make his way out to the field, and he is going to punt it from way back in his end zone. And a big time stiff arm out of the receiver. Number six on the punt, return. Doesn't get too many yards, but I'll tell you one thing about this punter. When he punts the ball, it's gonna come off his foot and it's gonna come off pretty. If you tuned in last time with us when we were down here at Miramar, American Heritage game, that punter outstanding. Coming off the side of his foot, had one of the Heritage players muff the punt late in the game. and. Could have been one of the reasons why they lost you're absolutely, that game. You're absolutely correct, Ryan. And, and that kind of field position is the same thing we saw last week when Carroll City was punting the ball to Booker T. You cannot give a team with this much depth and this much power that kind of field position. Rizzo's under center with a power eye formation. Actually, he's got a power formation. Give it to off tackle. And he's caught immediately. I'm actually caught and lost for about three yards. That fired up the Patriots. It did. Yes, it did. Number 33 on the big-time tackle and the stop. I know that's going to get them fired up. Miramar. First, first carry of the game by Scarlett. 
They're letting them know it's not going to be easy. Give it Scarlett again. He breaks off the right hand side, picks up about five or six yards. Nice drive. Number three, 33, Leverius Alvius on the tackle. And I'll tell you one thing, it is a, uh, such a treat just to be out here today, to be able to tune in to this game. I mean, these are two outstanding programs. And if you haven't mentioned yet, Glenn, uh, Miramar has won this game, I believe, in the past three years. They've taken the W in this game. So this is a, uh, not only is it turning into a big time rivalry, but these are two great programs that are on the field today. Yes, it has, Ryan, and they've got a little chip on their shoulder. Not only they got three down, but they lost last week. Coming in with that power formation. Snap is bad. Recovered by Rizzo. Brings up fourth down and about six, seven. They're going to bring the field goal unit in, Ryan. Wow. Well, I'll tell you one thing. No, nope, they got the punter in the game. I'll tell you one thing. This week went down to St. Thomas Aquinas, ran into not only an old friend, but a former University of Tennessee punter and kicker, Michael Pilardi. And I'll tell you one thing. I believe he's only been down here for a couple weeks, but since he's been down here, he's been working with the St. Thomas Aquinas special teams uh, group. So I'll tell you, if, uh, if you can't ask for better coaching out here this week, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that with Michael Pilardi. Once again, Michael Pilardi, former University of Tennessee kicker and punter, most I would believe I would say most known for is South Carolina. Big time South Carolina win under the coaching staff of Butch Jones, taking it big time in the SEC. And not only is he a former UT player, but he's taken his talents to the NFL. You got that right, Ryan, and he was excited to see you, too, because you came from around those parts, but you were over there on Strictly Business. Absolutely. <laughs> it was. We had some good laughs. Hopefully, I, I catch up with him later on tonight. Well, that looks like they're going to pant. I mean, punt. I'll get that out of my mouth. There you go. Wow, they're going for major field position. I guess they didn't have the leg, and he wasn't going for it. And the punter is, um, the punter, he actually got a chance to boot it. So he got a little practice run in there, and it was actually a very decent punt right inside the 10-yard line exactly where he wants it um, and right out of bounds. Doesn't give an opportunity for number one, Tyree Cole, which is back to return, an opportunity to do what he does best, best and take it to the house. That's right, Tyreek returned one for 75 yards last week against Plantation in their 42 to nothing prompt, so watch out. Snap is high. Tyreek took it back at the goal line. He brings it out. Thank goodness the touchback. I don't know what in the world he's running out to the one-yard line for. Not the best decision he's made this game. It's early on in the game, so I guess we could give that one to him, but I know he's not going to hear. Yep, I can see it right now. He's on the sideline. Coach Strout isn't too happy about the decision that he just made. That is not a veteran decision. That's not a captain-like decision, but, hey, you know, we're not perfect. Well, they got lucky on that one. Bring it out to the 20-yard line. First and 10 for the Patriots. Lining up in a spread backfield. And they're going to hold it for us right now. Refs are going to figure some stuff out. St. Thomas Aquinas Raiders got a big boys up on that defensive line. Going to pitch it to the right-hand side. Cuts back. He's going to lose about three yards. That was McCray on the rush. Loss of about two. Bring up second down and 12. McCray in the backfield. Zone read. Mark keeps it. Picks up maybe two or three. We'll check that. A gain of five. It'll be up third down and about eight yards. 
Well, we'll see what play calls we get here in this this third down. Unfortunately, they don't want to go three and out again. Um, Damari, his dual threat mentality, he's going to take off, or he's going to, or he's going to throw the ball. Unfortunately, I don't think we have yet to see him throw the ball yet, or maybe once to the outside, maybe a wheel route. But we'll see what they can do. Eight yards. Seems to like go. there's a little confusion. They're set now. Pistol set. Rolling to the right hand side. Out of bounds. And as he throws his hands up in disbelief on what just happened with a third down, Damari is going to take the safe route and bounce it to the outside. That was and unfortunately uh, they're going to put was, up another first. That was down. lucky for both sides. First of all, St. Thomas got the ball in great field position, had to punt it back to the Patriots. Now the Patriots have the ball and they're kicking. Penalty marker is going to stop the play. Yes, Damari Simpkins is an outstanding quarterback. He has the dual threat ability um, to take off with the ball. He's very fast, uh, but also has a great release. Not the best when it comes to height, but as a junior, we're going to hope that he still has uh, about a year and a half to put some size on him. Oh, there you go, he got the punt off. Gonna let it roll. Down to the 30 yard line of St. Thomas. That was a good roll, good punt, good roll. Yes it was, and with the Patriots roll, it is gonna put the ball in St. Thomas Aquinas' hands once again. Let's see what they can put on the board. Still 0-0, zero, zero. 7-10 on the clock. Interested to see what kind of score we're gonna get tonight. I think it's gonna be high scoring or low scoring. Right now, they're just getting warmed up. I think they've got enough talent, enough guns out there that it it's going to be a, it may be a low scoring game. You're absolutely right. I, I believe as well it'll be the low scoring game. Um, these are both high scoring teams, but uh, once again with the, the weather issue, I think we're gonna see a little bit more conservative plays out of both sides of the ball, so. Well, they're going with Scarlett off tackle. Very conservative offense. I guess they're just filling out the Patriots. Big offensive line Raiders bring to the line of scrimmage. Patriots got a big line too. You've got 7A against 8A. Not much difference. Power eye, it's a fumble snap again. Let's see who comes up with the ball. I don't see any signal. Covered by St. Thomas. That's two exchange misses centered at quarterback. Yes, Brings up third down and nine yards. Yeah, that won't cut it. Um, I know those. that gets those coaches real frustrated when they see stuff like that. Um, you know, when the ball is wet, there's no excuse. You, you still have to be able to get the exchange down. It's just a waste of a play. Well, what do you think, Ryan, that big game last week, that big trip took it out of St. Thomas? I believe uh, Rizzo has hit hard in the backfield. Sack by number 33, Laboris Alvis. He took his feet out quick. Yes, and unfortunately, I believe it could go both ways. Uh, St. Thomas, it was a long trip to get an L on the record, and... Um, I know it's not expected from them, but I know there's a lot of expectations out of this football team. But at the same time, I know they can use it to their advantage and uh, hopefully uh, take advantage. So many markers everywhere. Yeah, hopefully they can take advantage of uh, and kind of use it, use it to get this team going to say, hey, you know, we're St. Thomas Aquinas. You know, not only are they big time in Florida, but this is a nationally ranked team. Move St. Thomas back to the 30-yard line. Be great field position for the Patriots. Patriots defense has been on top of it tonight. They may block it. He got it off. And there's no flag down. That ball is loose. St. Thomas is recovered. Wow. Oh, Durant. man. 
mishandled the ball. Oh, St. Boy. Thomas will get it back with great field position. Oh, boy. Now, I know they're not going to be too happy on that sideline. Miramar, oh, my gosh. Getting, just letting the ball go, holding it like a loaf of bread. I'm telling you, these athletes, South Florida, you've got some great student athletes on this field. But it changes the game when you have a wet field. You can't make those cuts on your inside foot anymore. And especially, you got to hold on to that ball, young man. Well, they've got a timeout on the sideline. They brought him over to talk about it. That's a couple of times that our Javante Durant has made some unwise decisions, and it could be very costly for the Patriots. The Patriots defense is playing great tonight. They just can't give the Raiders that good a field position. No, you can't. I mean, like I said before, they lost a play uh, dropping the ball, but they gain. This is their best play so far. St. Thomas is on the special team side. I mean, that's a, what would you say, about a 40-yard play, 45-yard play they just had? Yeah. I mean, you just went 45 yards maybe down the field, and you didn't have to throw it. It came off the punter's foot. St. Thomas with great field position, power formation. Rizzo loses the ball again. That is the third missed exchange for Rizzo. And it looks like by the beat of the chest, number 11 had the, wow. the upset on that play. And uh, I'll tell you one thing. If you haven't been with us before down here at Miramar, they are an enthusiastic bunch over here on the bleachers. Not as well, or uh, not just uh, the JV football team, but you got the band, you got the cheerleaders, you got the dancers. It's going to be a good night. Power formation again. Gives it off the left-hand side. Scarlett gains about three yards the hard way. They're going power football tonight, Ryan. Yes, he is. And I'll tell you one thing. I don't know if you had a chance to mention yet, but on the defensive line, uh, Brandon Morris, our scholar athlete of the game. Um, I think he's out there right now. I don't. I can't see what number he is on the field, but I don't know if you had a chance to mention, but our scholar athlete this, this week, it blew me away hearing um, his GPA with a 5.3. and 5.3. 5.3 and an offer. I don't know if he committed, but an offer to Yale. Got to love it. Ivy League all the way. Going after the education, and he's going to get it and get a free education along the way. St. Thomas takes a timeout. They take a timeout. We, too, will take a timeout. You're watching High School Sports, High School Game Day on HSPN. Brought to you by Bleacher.com. This is High School Football Primetime. Stay with us. Yes, welcome back. High school football prime time right here in the action. I'm sweating down here in the bleachers, but I'm loving it. St. Thomas getting the ball. A couple mishaps, last couple plays, but let's see what they can do. And a big time Jordan hit. Jordan runs. He yes. didn't get anything. Got Brandon Morris right in the chin strap. And we got some yellow coming out of the pockets. Some dirty laundry already. Refs are going to stop the clock. And we're going to see what this penalty is. It seemed like it had, had happened after the play against St. Thomas. The Miramar Patriots are pointing that way. Unsportsmanlike conduct against St. Thomas Aquinas. I know that's not going to go over well on that sideline. Fourth down and forever. Fourth down and forever, they kicked 
from there last time, so I'm assuming they're going to kick again. And they are. Punting from their own 45-yard line. Another penalty flag on the field. Yep, they're going to blow that whistle again. And I'll tell you, special teams are going to get a lot of action tonight. I know Pilardi's happy. Moves him back another five yards. Close to blocking it again. Kicks it down deep. This time wise decision. Durant let it go over his head for a touchback. Yes, sir. I, I already know what was going through his head when he saw that ball. Especially understanding, most importantly, your field position, where you're lined up. You have to understand. As a receiver, you need to understand where you are on the field. That ball's going over your head, and it's going into the end zone. Excuse me, I needed to look at my roster. At quarterback for St. Thomas Aquinas, number 17, Blake Devo today. And I don't know if you heard that. Got a break in the action. No, no, I think uh, yeah, I heard the announcer say we have a different quarterback in the game. Don't quote me, but I think we'll have to look into that. A lot going on out here, folks. We'll get that figured out for you as soon as possible. Well, it's got a first down at the 10-yard line. See where they're going to line it up. Hey, believe it or not, he may have uh, gone out that one big play. Um, he may have got injured earlier on that game, that tackle, when he tried to take off. His Rizzo, leg. he got chopped really low. I think so. But uh, we'll have to look into that. Well, Cam just told us the Deaver's in at quarterback right now. Okay. And uh, it thank may, you, Cam. Yeah, it may have been because of that one play. Uh, Rizzo trying to scramble and got a. That's Blake Deaver, number seventeen. He's in for St. Thomas. Patriots have the ball right off tackle. Gosh, and number 40. Nothing. Grabbing him like a dog, trying to pull him back. Coming down to the end of the first quarter, as you can see, folks, it's a 0-0 football game. Spread right offense, single back in the backfield. Runs right up the middle. That's number two, Anderson. Runs for a gain for about two yards. Third and long again. Once again, third and long. Wind it down first quarter. Fourth game of the season for the Patriots. Three step drop. Throws it down the right hand side. Well overthrown. Bring up fourth down. And 10 yards. They're going to have to punt it back to the Raiders. And we understand the Raiders are going to bring in number 17, Blake Deaver, a quarterback. They'll decline that penalty. It was a face mask on the offense. Fourth down. One man short for the Patriots on special teams. Punters in the end zone. St. Thomas is looking like they're coming for the block. Nope. He gets it off. It's a short kick. Fair catch. Taken by number seven, James Oliphant. First and ten Aquinas. 
and we'll see the new quarterback that comes out, Blake Deaver. Yes, we will. 6'4", 210 pound. He's a junior, Ryan. Okay. Well, we'll see what he can put on the board. Unfortunately, we lost Rizzo, one of our impact players for tonight. But just want to give a shout out to our special teams coach for Miramar. Tuned into the whole game this week. Had a chance to pull me over to the side during practice. He said, "Hey, man, you got to you got to show some love to our punters," in which we did versus Heritage. Outstanding punter we have. Um, believe he's number 40. Five for uh, Miramar, but unfortunately got a bad snap right there. But hey, he puts in as much work as these other players do as well. Well, great field position for the Raiders on the 37 yard line. Give it to the field, but fullback. Boy, he hits a big hole. Number four, he may break it down to about the 10 yard line. Saving tackle down there. That's number four, Deltron Sands. We talked about Deltron last year, running back. He bid pick up first down. We saw Deltron twice last year, once against Plantation and the second time for the district championship against Deerfield Beach. Wow, Deltron on a quick hitter. First in goal, bad snap again. Deaver picks it up. That is the fourth bat snap between center and quarterback. Well, it doesn't help that there's a new quarterback in as well. Um, not only was the starter, Rizzo, having some trouble with the center exchange, but hopefully they can figure it out sometime by the end of this night. And I think we're just going to run out of time. They may get one more playoff. Well, that's second and goal. They will get one play. Everybody's coming. Deltron right up the middle. He's powering his way. He may make it into the end zone. He's close. Picks up about three. No, and I think it's going to put him right on about the six-yard line. I'm sure they're going to be happy to move to the other end of the field. That's a sandbox right there. Yes, they are. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in tonight. HSPN bringing you high school sports all season long. We're into game four of the season. You're watching Miramar Patriots take on the Raiders of St. Thomas Aquinas, still a zero to zero score. We thank you always for tuning in and all of our viewers tonight. Make sure you tune in all night because the action is coming to you. Yes, this is high school game day brought to you by HSPN. Football prime time powered by HSPN. And a shout out to those sponsors. All your fans around the country that are watching. Florida Varsity, we appreciate all your fans coming in. FloridaHighSchoolFootball.com. Florida Gridiron Preps. And Bleacher.com. Thank you all and all of your fans and all the work you do empowering our kids and giving them the exposure they need to get to the next level. This is Glenn Stout. I'm here with Ryan Stout. I'm inside the booth, and I am looking at a wall. Ryan is outside on camera one, and he's got the mic and the headset, and we've got Lazo down on the field live. Looking at him. We're going to try to get to him in a minute. Oh, man. If they could only see, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we always love to bring you inside the booth. Unfortunately, we won't be able to bring you in the booth tonight. But if you could only see what the setup looks like, once again, this is high school sports. We're in the wild, wild west. You talk about coming in to broadcast. We thank those coaches, the, the athletic departments as well, for uh, inviting us to come out tonight and produce this game for you. But you talk about the conditions. They're not the best. Going to try to get it out to the outside. Jordan Scarlett runs out of bounds. Fourth down. But with these conditions. Thomas is bringing on their kicking team, Ryan. With these conditions, um, especially being in the box, we always appreciate um, those that take care of us. And Cam tonight is the announcer for the game. We have to get his last name uh, sometime tonight. But outstanding job. Uh, his production is always on point. Got that good announcer voice as well as uh, a great team that supports him of students um, that go to Miramar. So we always appreciate when uh, we're taken care of and Miramar Patriots always takes care of HSBN. We're working on it right now. We're trying to get Lazaro on the sideline and see if we can get him.
We're working on it right now, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we are having a little technical difficulties, but we're going to bring you to the field with uh, Lazaro on the sideline right in the action. All right, we got Lazaro Suarez on the sideline. Lazaro, what's your reaction down there? We're inside the five-yard line, fourth down. St. Thomas is going for it. Field, and it's definitely a defensive matchup, that's for sure. Well, the refs did call it. There they go. Lazaro, that's the first big touchdown of the game. What's it looking like down there when they had a couple mishaps? Down there, down there, Lazaro, when they had a couple of mishaps, uh, when they fumbled punch, what's the mood down on the Miramar sideline? Still pretty well composed. Pretty well composed. There's not a whole lot of yelling from the coaches' side. Looks like the, uh, the rain earlier is causing the ball to slip out of, the, out of these guys' hands, but overall, spirits are high. The game is still early. Okay, Lazaro, thank you. We'll get back to you in a few minutes. That's Lazaro Suarez down on the sideline with us live. Live commentary. And St. Thomas Aquinas takes the lead 7 to nothing, right there at the beginning of the first, uh, second quarter, rather. And we've got us a score on the scoreboard. About time. It is about time, thankfully. We got some points on the board, and it just happened to be the Raiders of St. Thomas Aquinas. Got the kicking team out here. Patriots back to receive the ball. Damari Simpkins is going to get the ball in his hands once again. Only impact player tonight on the offensive side for the Patriots. Had a great game against American Heritage. Unfortunately, came up short with a loss, but hoping to redeem himself and hold the tradition of beating the St. Thomas Aquinas football team one more year. Well, they got one on the board. It took them a whole quarter to get warmed up. Four fumble muff by the quarterback now let's see what Miramar can do with it Miramar has the ball looks like he's close to the 25 see where they're going to set it down Bring it over to the left hash. Looks like they're going to set it down at the 25-yard line. First and tier. Got trips to the bottom side. He's going to go with his own read. Nothing. Matter of fact, he might have lost two yards. Second down and long. Penalty flag. Big gainer, but it's going to be brought back. See what the call is going to be. Be holding against Miramar. Back them up 10 more yards. It's Spot not some, foul. Yeah, it's not something they need right now in this point of the game. Especially early on in the second quarter. It is important for the Patriots right now to put at least some points on the board. They got to strike a little blood, uh, especially playing against the St. Thomas team. Like we said before, it might not be that high scoring of a game, but you know, it's gonna be a pretty close match. Second down and long. It's a quick throw out to the right hand side. Number three makes a cast. Lewis picks up six or seven. These third and longs are going to kill him, though. I'll tell you one thing. I mean, I haven't seen so many third and longs yet this season. And it feels like we've been in the season a long time, but it's only game four. 
You're exactly correct. Got twin set, single back in the backfield. False start offense, gonna be a five yard penalty. And that's gonna bring up a third and really long. Not just long, but really long. About 20 yards, it looks like. They'll try it all over again. Roll to the left. He throws out their outstretched hands. Incomplete pass. Fourth down. And forever going to bring out the punt team again for the Patriots. Well, so far in this game, it doesn't look too well for the Patriots. Neither... Shoot, to be completely honest, it doesn't look too good for either of these teams. Uh, St. Thomas finally putting some points on the board. Horrible punt. Doesn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. Rolls out to the 43-yard line. Excellent field position for the Raiders. Well, I don't think it was the best snap either, so. What that special team coach say to you, Ryan? Oh, the special teams coach, outstanding. They got his got his own little field um, during practice, but he was excited. He had a chance to check out, tuned in about the whole American Heritage game afterwards, and uh, he was he was real excited um, because he knows that one thing is we follow the underrated athletes as well. We always bring those impact players and scholar athletes to you, but we like to focus in on the whole team. And I'll tell you from personal experience, one thing about high school football, every time I broadcast, is understanding that discipline and special teams is going to win this game tonight. Well, Aquinas has the ball once again. Deaver's going to take a shot in the backfield. He gives it off. Pick up maybe about three or four yard line. Bring up second down and nine yards. And and it's always special, you know, special teams, kickers, punters. That was the same conversation I had also with uh, Michael Pilardi. Um, you know, as a kicker, as a punter, you're not getting all the praise, I can tell you that. But when you do something good, everyone notices. Deaver under center. Gives it to Scarlett off the right-hand side. Picks up about two yards. Tackle by number 14, Brandon Morris. There goes that Miramar Patriots band. I know they go hard, and I know they're going to go hard tonight. I love it when they come out. You know they're, they're intense when they come out in the raincoats. But it has seemed to cool down, well, not temperature-wise, but rain cool down. Because I'll tell you one thing, it is brutal out here, down here in South Florida. I mean, with that rain and it just feels like it's steaming up off the ground right now. The air is thick. Deaver's back, seven yards stopped. He throws it deep down the right-hand side. He's got a receiver there. Trips. They're gonna call a penalty, but it looked like he tripped. It wasn't intentional, but he's gonna get 15 yards. And that's gonna be one-on-one. -on -one. That was a great defensive play. It was, Tyreek Cole, impact player to the night on that play. And they both laid out for it. And unfortunately, we got some dirty laundry on the field. It's going to be pass interference, and it's going to give him 15 yards. And first down. Nice arm on that young man. They gave him that one. From up here, it didn't look like pass interference. Yeah. Cole had great coverage on him, and the receiver just caught it in his feet. Off tackle to Scarlett. Takes it up the middle, a little power football. Picks up about three yards. Brandon Morris again on the tackle. And it looks like we have uh, Patriot down on the field. 
Maybe got a stinger. Defensive side of the ball. Hopefully he's okay. The referee's going to take a little time to himself. Yeah, we hope he's okay. Folks, we're glad you're with us today. High school game day. Brought to you by High School Programming Network. This is Saturday night football, prime time, Miramar versus St. Thomas. Sponsors tonight for the show, Bleacher.com, B-L-E-E-C-H-R.com, Florida Gridiron Preps.com, Florida High School Football, Florida HS Football.com, and Florida Varsity.com. We thank all of you for being the best sports bloggers, not only in the state of Florida, but in the country the hardest working sports bloggers in the country. Well, he's coming off on his own foot, so that's good news. And it's gonna bring up a second down and a long way to go, second probably nine. And let's see if St. Thomas can put some more points on the board. Deaver rolls to the right hand side. Try to make a one-handed catch, but it's not going to happen. Bring up third down and nine. Yep, a lot of things change when you get some water involved. Can't make those one-handed catch. Can't make those nice cuts anymore, huh? Got to keep your feet up. Well, what do you got to do? Go back to the basics. Got to keep your feet up under you. Coach won't like that one at all. Hey, Brian. Brian. Hey, Brian. Deaver takes a big hit. Ball's on the ground. Hey, Brian. Jordan Scarlett recovers the ball. Big hit. Rizzo's doing okay. Is that Rizzo back in the game? Number seven? No. Number seven. I'm sorry, that's not Rizzo, that's Deaver. That brings up fourth down and 15. 16. They're going for it on this round. Got to make it down close to the 15. That's a bad snap. Deavers can't handle it. He's hit big. And he goes down for another 10-yard loss back to the 41-yard line. Patriots will take over at their own 41. It's Trevon on down. It's Brandon makes another big hit. Brandon Morris. Wow. Wow. Going on it. Going for it on fourth. Fourth and what? About 16 yards. St. Thomas. Not only did they just... It was uh, the exchange between the quarterback and the center. That's, you know, didn't even get a chance to make the play. Going to be a pitch and a pass out to the right-hand side. Ball is going to be picked off. Number two picks it off. That's Lance DeVoe, Jr., defensive back, Aquinas, and that was a tough one to trick play and they got caught on it and that's what I like to call pulling the rabbit out of the hat pulling it a little early in the game second quarter coach is already doing a halfback pass with uh, safety dropping back into the lower thirds as well as the the cornerback and unfortunately number two coming up with the reception wrong side of the ball once again St. Thomas is going to come out with the offense and maybe put some points on the board. Seven, St. Thomas, zero, Miramar Patriots. This is high school game day, brought to you by HSPN. To join number four from Pops. I drove a thousand miles 
see my boy play. I love you, kid. To join number four and Shaft, number two. We're so proud of the accomplishments of you two over the past year. Hashtag Dark Side Family. It's all love. To join number four from Alex from the dog Joey. Let me get some head cracks out there. To join number four from Anna and Emmy, the force is with you. Let's get it. Love A and E. To join number four, you got this. I love you. Money made. Ashley. St. Thomas brings it out over the ball. Deaver's got it once again. Been taking a beating tonight. The off tackle. Deltron Sands gets around the left-hand side. Picks up about eight yards. Out to about the 33-yard line. Brings up about second down and five yards for the Raiders. Gives off to Scarlet to the right side. He's going to try to get to the edge. Big hit out there. Number 26 puts it on him, McFadden. Kendrell McFadden. Bring up second down at about three yards. Actually caught, correct that, third down at three. Kind of looked like the big hit we got to see today before we came out here. Troy versus Georgia. Had to see our boy Sony Michelle putting in some work that game, but big time hit by, I believe. Deltron doesn't go anywhere. He loses about three yards. It's going to be fourth down and five yards. I believe it was the Troy defense. Number 36 came up and just laid the wood on one of the backup running backs. Raiders will wisely punt this one. Nice deep punt. Oh, loses his feet over the 50 yard line. Gonna get something back. Durant was trying to get to the corner of the end zone and he just got tripped up. First down Patriots inside 50 yard line of the Raiders. Simpkins brings them up. Twin set with a man in motion. Fakes the give around the side. He's taking off the left-hand side. He's got some room. He breaks down to the 30-yard line. He may have it in the end zone. Down to the 10. Down to the 5. Touchdown. Patriots score. Damari Simpkins. No flags on the field. 47-yard romper. Fakes the give to the motion man. Takes it down the left-hand side for 47 yards. And he scores for the Patriots. Big time run by Damari Simpkins. Oh my goodness. You talk about speed at its finest. Leaving the pack in the dust. Simpkins gonna take it. Who knows how far, but he took it all the way to the house. Put some points on the board. Let's see if they can convert on this field goal right here, this extra point. And it's gonna go through the uprights and it's gonna put seven on the board for the Patriots. It's about time. Late in the second quarter, we got the Miramar Patriots tied it up with the Raiders of St. Thomas Aquinas. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching it here live with us on hsbnsports.com. We thank you for tuning in tonight. One of our best productions so far because we got two great football teams and we got some great people that have our back. Once again, shout out to all of our sponsors tonight, all of our bloggers, all of our fans. We love you. We thank you for tuning in. 
Hey, yeah, do Ryan, and we've been playing around up here a little bit because we can see the the jump in the CPU rate on the computer. We're streaming. The stream rate must have dropped a little bit, so we're going to play with the scoreboard coming in and out to keep you up to date and be able to get it done for you. And we got some Marines in the back of the end zone putting in some push-ups. I saw earlier they got their uh, tent set up, gotten them do, uh, gotten the people doing some pull-ups, pull-up contest. But once again, shout out to the Marines out here tonight doing some push-ups in the back of the end zone. Seven to seven ball game, 437. Kick is down to the goal line. Hit big right there about the 20, just over the 20 yard line. Number seven, Oliphant take the ball. We're going to try to get Lazo down on the field again, get the reaction of the Patriots. As soon as he gets wired back up, he's going to let us know. Lazaro, how are they reacting to that touchdown the Patriots found? I know you're over there on the, the uh, Raiders side of the ball. Uh, actually, the team's not taking it too bad. It's kind of taking it in stride. Listen, nobody's ever happy when they're scoring on you, but I think the fans liked it less. <laughs> there was a lot of moaning and groaning up here, but uh, they're ready to fight back, that's for sure. How's the uh, quarterback that got injured, Rizzo, how's he doing? Probably need a little bit of time off and hope they'll put them right back in. Okay, we'll check back with you later. Thanks a lot. That's Lazaro on the sideline live for us. HSPN. Yes, sir. Lazaro from Bleacher.com made his way out today from down south Miami and all the way up to Miramar, Florida, bringing that sideline reaction. Give us off the left hand side. That's Scarlett. He may pick up two, but he's caught by a host of Patriots. Tackle made, made by Lucas and Morris. Brandon Morris all over the field tonight, making big time plays. And gotta love, wish I had a camera on my face when uh, Coach Stroud yeah, told me about his GPA, good. making him the Scholar Athlete of the week with a 5.3 GPA and an offer to Yale University. This is one of the great rival series, Ryan. You played in one of those up in Alcoa, Tennessee. Yes, yes it is. Big time game. Zone Reed gives off the right hand side. Scarlett's not gonna get a thing. Looks like those big linemen are a little worn out, Ryan. They might have gotten it at Bosco. Got their hands on their hips. Yeah, I think so. I know it also did make it too much easier when uh, you got a muck of a field. Um, at the same time, weighing their feet down a little bit. You know, and at the same time, you know, heading all the way up north. Who knows? Still might have a little jet lag going on. Well, they got to punt the ball. It's fourth and forever. Actually, fourth and 13. But it's going to put the ball back in the hands of the Patriots in great field position. Two minutes left in the second half. Two minutes left in the second quarter, excuse me. Bad punt off the side of his foot. Yes, sir, big time game. That means big time people are in the building. Got a full box of media. Got a full sideline of media. And as it's approaching the halftime, I know we're gonna get a great show. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. 
Um, you want to see a great performance by a great uh, high school band? My goodness. Uh, check in at a Heritage and Miramar game last week. Outstanding performance for the halftime show. Damari's got to scramble around the left-hand side. He's going to take a loss and needs to get rid of that ball. Back to about his 42, 43 yard lines of the Raiders. Ryan, he's just got to get rid of that ball. He can't take those losses. Yeah, especially at this point in the game. Uh, especially coming into halftime. Uh, Damari, you know, get rid of the ball. I know he has the, the footwork and the speed to get outside. But um, unfortunately gave up a loss on that play. He lost about eight yards on that one. He's got trips to the bottom side. Going to roll to the right. Nice little out pattern out here. Going to about the 38-yard line. Clock's coming down to 115 and running. Timeout called by the Patriots. Second called timeout. To Destiny Rolf and her mom, you look good out there, baby girl. You showed up, now show out. To Destiny Rolf and Aaliyah, Once again, folks, you're watching High School Game Day. Brought to you by Bleacher. This is HSPN South Florida. Miramar Patriots, number eight against the number four St. Thomas Aquinas Raiders. This is high school football primetime powered by HSPN South Florida. Thank you once again to our sponsors tonight and all the viewers that are watching from FloridaVarsity.com, FloridaHighSchoolFootball.com, Florida Gridiron Preps, and Bleacher Dot com. Thank you for all the hard work you do and for your fans watching tonight. Third and 13 for the Patriots. Simpkins is an empty backfield. Going to roll the right hand side, throws it out of bounds. Still third down. And they are backing him up. Like it was a holding pattern. Holding penalty. I'm on a pattern. First time in a booth, Ryan, that I've ever looked at a wall. But they got us in here. Well, it happens to the best of us. And, <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, you got to take a... You got to take it for what it is, especially in high school sports. We were just fortunate enough to get a spot tonight, being that this is such a high-power football game. But well, Amari's got a man in motion, third and forever. Three-step drop. He's stepping up into the pocket. He throws it deep over the middle. It's overthrown. It's going to bring up fourth down. Right at one minute. Another hold on the offense. <laughs> Penalty will be declined. Fourth down. The mate Patriots will punt it back with one minute left. The Raiders will get the ball. Again, folks, they've had to bring in their second string quarterback. Rizzo took a big hit in the first quarter when he tried to scramble. Had his feet taken out from under him. And Lazaro gave us a report from the sideline saying he may come back in. But it will impact the way these guys are playing. Nice high kick. Miramar Patriots all around it to down it. 
the 17 yard line. That's where the Patriot, that's where the Raiders will take over the ball. First and 10 with 48 seconds left in the first half. Yes, sir. Not the best looking uh, offense and defense for both sides of the ball. Only got a seven point to seven point game so far in this game. But going into halftime, wonder uh, what kind of changes they'll make on the offense and the defense being that it's been a pretty rough game for both of these teams, especially losing a key player, impact player, uh, Rizzo, for uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. Like you said, he may uh, get a chance to come back in the game, but that's a key loss, especially at the quarterback position, especially for the St. Thomas team. But uh, we can look forward to uh, what this quarterback can put together. Well, Deaver's going to take a knee. He's going to let the clock run out. And I think that's the most appropriate response um, so far in this game. Um, taking a knee at this point, they need to get back, uh, get a chance to regroup. It's kind of been, you know, flying around out here. They're just, you know, putting stuff together. But they uh, they need to get into halftime, both of these teams, regroup, get a chance to figure out what they will do successfully um, to win this game on both sides of the ball. And that's I think that's going to put us into halftime. That will bring us to halftime. Let's see if we can bring Lazaro up live on the sideline. Well, as the Miramar Patriots take their way off the field, St. Thomas, we're going to see if we can bring Lazaro up live. Yes, and once again, this HSPN South Florida bringing you all the action here in South Florida from some of the best teams in the nation, nationally ranked St. Thomas Aquinas and uh, Miramar, the Patriots, doing some outstanding things this season, early on in the season, but big time game tonight, big time robbery. We're going to let you enjoy the halftime with the band. We're still working on last row down on the field. There we go. You probably heard it. Cam was giving a great announcement for this fantastic band that's getting ready to play from Miramar High School.
We got Lazaro Suarez live down on the field. Lazaro, we saw a little bit of running around. Quarterback got hurt on the St. Thomas side. What's the mood over there with the Raiders? They're, uh, they're obviously not happy with the score. There's a lot of missed opportunities on their end. They're bobbling the ball left and right. and uh, Coach is probably going to need a throat lozenge at halftime. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, we saw Durant, number five for the Patriots, muff a lot of balls early in the game. Did you see what his mood was? He got to redeem himself a little bit on one of those punt returns. But how is he looking when he comes off the sideline? Good. It looks pretty good. Uh, again, it's just you know it's taking a little wear and tear on you with the, with the sloppy conditions. But overall, the, the St. Thomas is real happy with you know with what's going on. As far as turnovers are pretty much even keel on both sides of the field. But uh, overall, are they 100% happy? Absolutely not. But so far, the kids are looking good. There's no serious uh, injuries or anything. You know, a couple of slips and falls. But overall, not too bad. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's Lazaro Suarez from Bleacher.com down on the sideline for us live. Lazaro, thank you very much. We're going to take you off the air. Folks, enjoy the band.
judgment. The time has come. You are about to experience the soldier band from Patriot Land. The platinum sound of Miramar High. Drum majors, Jeffrey, PhD, Ferdinand. Absent tonight, Bradley, the look, Aaron's. And Aaron, the head, Torres. Many try to imitate them, but they are simply the untouchables. As you notice, the Miramar High School band surrounds the entire field. Ladies and gentlemen, the soldier band from Patriot Land, the marching musical explosion of Miramar High School.
Well, as they get warmed up, we're going to come back to you live. We've got a couple of messages in on our Twitter that the video wasn't real smooth in the first half, and that was because with the upload speed, we're going to turn down the scoreboard, give you the score and play-by-play -play on the score. We rather you have a good stream and good audio, and we'll get it right. Ryan, we're back live. I'm going to give a shout-out to all those guys that are the hardest-working bloggers. South Florida. Yes, sir. Great to be back. Bleacher.com. Florida GridironPreps.com. Florida High School Football.com. Florida Varsity.com. And Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation brings you with the media group HSPN Sports South Florida. StealthRating.com, the only rating service in the country that rates a student athlete based on their character, grades, and game readiness. And student athletes, if you want to learn how to play the recruiting game, go to PlayingTheRecruitingGame.com. We take a business approach to the recruiting process. This is Glenn Stout. I'm back here live, Miramar, Florida, with Ryan Stouts. Yes, sir. We're getting ready. Yes, sir. Welcome back. Everyone, great halftime performance by both St. Thomas and Miramar Patriots. Bands are outstanding here. The, the, I believe they call the dancers their national championship dance. The sophisticated sapphires. Outstanding performance by both bands once again. And we welcome both football teams back out to the stadium. And I hope they went and regrouped and put something together. What do you think uh, is going through 
uh, both teams' minds right now, Glenn? Well, I know one thing. They've been playing their fourth game for both teams. It was a preseason game for St. Thomas. Yeah, the field's muddy. A uh, little rain. It's definitely humid. They're used to that. They've been playing all summer long. You've got two high-powered teams here that usually will make their way, one of them, to the Citrus Bowl every year. And they really, really need to get something going. Now, I know that Rizzo going down early or late in the first quarter has had an impact on the rest of the team. That's your team leader. But you've got another 10 players that are highly qualified to do what they need to do. On the other hand, on the other side of the ball, the Patriots, they've had a couple of good weeks. They brought in the new quarterback, Damari Simpkins, during the Heritage game. He lit it up against Plantation, 42 to nothing last week. Last week, St. Thomas took a defeat to Bosco. 7-7 game, Ryan. We need to see something in the second half. These guys got to get their motors running. Yes, sir. And this is, if this is your first time ever tuning in to a Miramar St. Thomas game, Miramar has taken this game. It has turned in such a big robbery that Miramar has taken this game three years in a row um, to the nationally ranked St. Thomas Aquinas team. Yes, they have. And they're going to try to make it four. Patriots kick it off to the Raiders. Touchback into the end zone. Be first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Yes, sir. And once again out here at practice this uh, week, got to hang out with Miramar, got to hang out with St. Thomas, um, got the chance to talk to some of the Miramar, uh, not only coaches, but um, just people part of the community. And uh, like I said, this is a big-time game, not only for this football team, but for the town as well. Um, like we said, Miramar has taken it the past three years. And um, we definitely, one thing that we all had in common was it's a game of pride at this point. Uh, St. Thomas will play at a national level and uh, is looking to take their talents to another state championship game. But, you know, you know, state championships, everything, but if you can't beat Miramar. Yes, you're correct. Little zone read. Giving to Scarlet, gonna try, nope, that's Deltron Sands. Makes the left side, he picks up about five yards. And that's not taking away anything from Miramar because they are absolutely a great program, which not only puts out some great talent, but they uh, they make it to the state championship. They, I, don't, I can't think of the last time they made it, but I know all you know that uh, Geno Smith, that's, that's the main man, came out of Miramar. Bring up a second down, five yards. A big quarterback's gonna keep the ball. Packed by Joey Diaz. Not too much of a gain for the backup quarterback. And I'll tell you one thing, uh, St. Thomas program, they do a fine job in preparing their student athletes for these game day situations. Unfortunately, we lost our impact player Rizzo. Um, the beginning of the game um, due to uh, just a, a tackle. A uh, defensive player came in, knifed him at his legs. Uh, maybe we'll return in this game. I don't know at this point, but backup quarterback doesn't seem like he's too much of a scrambler, uh, but he, they're definitely calling the plays for him to pull it, and he has he had no doubts when he pulled that one. Well, it brings up third down. His whistle's blowing. 10-34. In the third quarter, delay a game on the Raiders. Back them up another five yards. It'll bring up third down and 10. Trip to the soft side. He's going to give it Scarlett to the right side. He's going to lose four yards. A host of Miramar Patriots take him down. Just looks like, Ryan, they're in slow motion tonight. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, and, you know, we can't just blame it. We can't keep blaming it on the weather. Um, though it was some dull weather, it looks like some dull attitudes. Had a chance to walk around on the field. And, you know, they did their usual routine. Both sides of the ball, you know, getting pumped up. But it... You're just not seeing it out of both these teams tonight. Gets the punt off. It's going to be a short punt. 
Referee's going to down it at the inside the 40-yard line. Great field position for the Patriots right there in front of us. Let's see if Simpkins can bring his offense out and punch one in, take the lead against the Raiders. Early in the third quarter, 9.54 remaining, 7-7 ball game. He's got trips down here to the bottom side, single coverage on the top. Backed off seven yards, giving him a lot of respect. Quick swing over here to the right-hand side. Very poor pass. I'm telling, I'll tell you one thing. Good thing you guys are in the box because these guys are starting to get some Popeye's fried chicken. They're pulling it out right in front of me. Oh, boy. <laughs> Last week up in Traz Pal Stadium, had the barbecue going, had the, the conch salad. Outstanding support out of the restaurants in the area. And tonight they pulled out the Popeye's fried chicken. And it's killing me right now. Good old Popeye's. Well, Dimitri's got a pistol set. Second down and 10. 9.45 and counting. Three-step drop, throws the left-hand side. Incomplete. Third down and 10. And I believe that's the third time tonight that uh, Damari has overthrown a ball. I mean, great arm strength, but you got to get it down. I can't tell if he's, it's just he's thrown off his back foot or he's just... He's letting the ball, releasing it too high, but that's about the third time tonight that that's happened to him. Well, they may get called for a penalty for bringing players in and out of the sideline. I guess nobody's set yet. 9.41 on the clock. Seems like there's confusion. This is a little late in the season to have this kind of confusion. That's gonna be a delay of game. Refs counting it off in the backfield. They're going to walk off five more yards the other way. Great field position for the Patriots. Squandering it right now. Back to the Raiders' 45-yard line. After an interception by, thrown by Brad Kaya, the Miami defense stiffens and holds for punt time. Game still tied at seven. Miami Hurricanes and Nebraska Cornhuskers. I believe it is in the second quarter. Taking a lot of time. Miramar will take time out. They still have confusion, and it behooves me how you can have that coming. How much can I have that much confusion fourth game of the season? Yeah, I know the coaches aren't too happy about that decision. Um, but believe it or not, it could be the coaches at fault at this point in the game, unless there's just a communication issue. Um, but they got players running around on the field. Who knows what's going on down the field? But Miramar, they can't. They got to maintain this drive. It's already three and out. I mean, what, three and about 15, 16 yards? They can't afford to not put some points on the board um, this late in the game. Again, thanks to our sponsors today. All the people watching, FloridaVarsity.com, FloridaHighSchoolFootball.com, FloridaGridIronPreps.com, and Bleacher.com. Got Lazaro down on the field with us today on the live mic. Well, third down and long. Dimitri brings him up. He's looking to his right hand side. Going to take off up the middle. Slides down at about 37, 38 yard line. Sliding down. Short of the first down. Yeah, I was about to say, sliding. I mean, third down. Boy. Not sure why he's sliding before he got the first down. Unless you, well, as we can see, obviously they're not going for it, so I don't see the point. Maybe if they had something in place to say, okay, get as much as you can. Obviously it was a broken play, but don't know what was going through Damari's head right there. Maybe, who knows, maybe we'll, uh, we'll see our first fake punt of the night. 
Well, it's nine minutes in the third quarter. Timeout with St. Thomas. Yeah, special teams seem to line up a little quick. Who knows, they might, might be another opportunity to pull that rabbit back out the hat. Maybe get a fake punt right here. I mean, just inside the 40 yard line, obviously you've seen during the night this punter, he's a very good punter. Unless he can put it inside the 10 yard line in between that area. Um, it goes out the back of the end zone. It's only gonna be maybe a 21 yard, 22 yard punt. Who knows, let's see. Well, that's been about his average, except for one good one he had. We will see. Boy, they're going for a block. They didn't get it. Good punt. Punt goes down to the 11-yard line, 12-yard line where the referee got it. That was a short punt, but that was perfect, Ryan. Put it inside the 20. They sent everybody. Well, once again, the Raiders come up with another opportunity to put some more points on the board. Offense takes the field, and we are not gonna get a chance to see the starting quarterback once again. I think he's gonna be out for the rest of the game. Took and a big hit. He did. Took his feet out from under him. And Devers is gonna have to take over control. Nothing there. Oh, and the helmet, helmet coming comes off. Flying. And I'll tell you one thing, looking down on the field, we got some pretty dirty jerseys on both sides of the ball, but number five, he is clean as a whistle, and I know he's one of the starters. <laughs> That's Devontae Pete. That's Devontae Pete. We've had him, when he was a freshman, interviewed through NCRA Sports way back. Played at Dillard High School. Transferred over to St. Thomas. Gives it to Scarlett. Nothing there again. Swanson and Gordon combine on the tackle. Loss on the play. Another flag. Chop block against St. Thomas Aquinas. It's going to be a half the way to the goal line. You lose that leader and you lose that whole sink. Eight minutes in the third quarter. Still seven to seven. Second down and long. Second down and long. Throws it quick to the right hand side. It's almost dropped. Nothing but a couple yards. Bring up third down and forever. And that's about the second time I've seen number four for uh, the defense come in and just put a knife in there. I can't imagine what he does one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, that'll bring up third down and long. Trips to the bottom side. Devers looking left all the way. He throws it back to right-hand side. It may be a safety. It is a safety. The Patriots take two points. Devers just doesn't have the foot speed. And I'm not too, I'm not sure how much he played. You can see it right there, folks. Patriots nine, Raiders seven. 7-18 left in the third quarter. And also that last time they've been to the state championship, 2009. It's been a while for these Miramar Patriots, and I know they're hungry to get back to that state final. Perfect place to pin up Dieter. Not really much quick foot speed. His size, 6'4", 210 pounds. I think he's a little more than 210. Well, the Patriots are gonna get the ball back with great field position. Maybe that simulated him to get something done. Hopefully saw Damari Simpkins on the sideline with uh, the headset on after that uh, three and out or 
Yeah, I believe it was three and out. Came off to the sideline, had the headset on, was talking to some coaches. Hopefully he's putting something together to um, put some more points on the board. As you see, 9-7, two points. It could be the difference in this game, but you don't want to leave it up to chance with a program like St. Thomas Aquinas. No, you don't. But they've got a big negative going on with bringing Blake Deaver in. And it's just not stimulating this offense to get anything done. But two points is nothing. Great field position. Takes it over the 25. Big hit down here. Number 32. Gerald Lane Jr. He's a running back. 11th grader. And he put the wood on that receiver. Well, they got the ball out to about the 26-yard line. It'll be first and 10. We'll see if DeMurray Simpkins can put together a drive and capitalize some momentum that they have going right now, Ryan. Mitri takes it on his own read up the middle. He picks up about four yards, five yards. That's Simpkins. Well, it's the first time we've seen Simpkins under center. Gets a call from the sideline. Backs out from off center. Throws a quick out over here across the 40-yard line. Stops the clock. Gets a first down. And that'll work. Nice to hear that from Mr. Cam up in the press box. Nice to hear the words first down in this game. Yeah. Hadn't been too many. <laughs> you could hear Cam. First, first down for the Patriots. He's looking for a call from the sidelines. Zone Reed is going to keep it again up the middle. There's a hole he's going to lay down. Picks up three or four. Second down, and he picked up actually six. They'll give him. And it looks like the general's taking control of the game. Getting some yards. Hey, progression, progression. That's all you need against the St. Thomas defense. You're not... Don't worry about the big hitters all at once. Sustain a drive, run the clock. Wants his man to go deep, throws it down the right-hand side. He overthrows it, way overthrows. You might be able to hear this press box. We are on the Miramar side where the coaches want a desperate flag. They'll bring up third and four. There is no pass interference. A referee is to call a timeout. That's a water break timeout. 6.04 left in the third quarter. It is 9 to 7. The Patriots, will they make it four? We will see. Once again, we thank you for tuning in tonight with HSBN South Florida here on a Saturday night game day. Saturday night game of the week. We got college football, no sir, we got high school football. And we're out here in the nice rugged weather of sunny South Florida. Had a nice rain all day long, but you're tuning in to St. Thomas Aquinas, which is taking on the Patriots of Miramar High School. If this is your first time tuning in with us, we thank you. And for those that are just tuning in right now, the score is nine to seven with six minutes left in the third quarter. The Patriots are up by two points. Third down and six. Mari rolls to the left-hand side. He's got a receiver that's open. Close to the first down. That's a big-time hit by the Patriots defense. Or, excuse me, big-time hit by the, the Raiders defense. But again, first down for the Patriots, and they're driving down this field, and they do not want to lose this momentum. Second first down of the half for the Patriots. Working on a clock under 550. 
Zone read right up the middle. Big hole. Down the left-hand side. He make it back into the end zone. Oh, he's tripped down. Gregory McCray. He is moving it down from the 48-yard yard line. Here where they're going to mark it. Injury timeout. A gain of 37 yards. Another first down for the Miramar Patriots. McCray gets to the middle zone read and then hits the edge. Woo. Again, special thanks to FloridaVarsity.com. All of you folks to stay tuned in. FloridaHighSchoolFootball.com. FloridaGridironPreps.com. And Bleacher.com. Hardest working sports bloggers in Florida bring you all of the Florida scores, stats, and rankings. They do it for you. Well, we've got the Patriots moving the ball down the field, Ryan. Yes, sir. They got the momentum. Seven. They have the momentum going right now. Two first downs, like you said, the first two first downs um, of the half. And it's been, like I said before, it's been a while since we heard those words come over the PA system. But the momentum is definitely in the Patriots' hands right now. It is up to them to put some more points on the board to maybe solidify this win against the Raiders. And that'll put them up four in a row, four years in a row. Well, here we go. See if Damari can take him in. Great drive this quarter. Eden up clock. Started it out with a safety. Pistol set. Rolling out, throws it to the right-hand side. Touchdown, Patriots! Beautiful. Oh my, you've got a yellow flag in the end zone. They're gonna call pass interference on the offense. My goodness gracious, bringing it back. Plus 10 yards, oh boy. Wow. Oh my. And not only does that put them back, but that is taking them back, way back. And the fans do not support the decision by the refs made. Well, they'll do it all over again, 526. Kamari's got him in a pistol set. He's looking right again to the corner. Almost caught for a touchdown. Nice throw. Second and 20. That was a great call by Coach Strout. Went right back after that safety. Back in a pistol set. He's looking right again. Throws it over the outstreet hands. Bring a third down and 20. Third down and 25, correction. They've only run 13 seconds off the clock. 513. Nine to seven ball game. Damari lines him up. Three-step drop. He steps up into the pocket. Throws it quick. It's caught over the middle. Lil Lewis 
makes a catch. Picks up 15, but it brings up fourth down. And that 15 would have been real good if they weren't so far back in the first place. Unfortunately, got that um, pass interference against the offense call in the back. Well, of what the are end they going to call? They are going to be on for the attempt. Under five minutes, clock is running third quarter. This would give them a five point lead. Kick is up. And the kick is good. The score, Miramar 12. St. Thomas seven. As you can see it's 427 left on the clock. Well, it got exciting, Ryan. I know a couple heads jumped in front of the camera on that one pass that was called back. But well, it's sure to get exciting. It was a nice drive. Damari brought him down the field on a sustained drive. Only got three points out of it. They're up by five. It's going to force the Raiders to have to score a touchdown. We still have time left in the third quarter. And then a whole fourth quarter left. Well, it was a great drive by the Patriots. Got a couple first downs in there. Uh, about time in this game. But, gosh, you talk about it rough call against the offense in the back of the end zone with a, a TD. Damari Simpkins rolling out to the right side of the field dumping it in the back of the end zone unfortunately comes up with a pass interference call pushes him back but hey I'm proud of him. Got to put some points on the board. St. Thomas Aquinas back to receive the ball let's see if they can put some points on the board to redeem themselves so far in this game we'll see if Deaver can come out and get him fired up I'm sure Coach Rocco on the sidelines has been in his ear. But you don't really know how much time he's played this year. I don't think he's played any. Kickoff is deep. Into the end zone for a touchback. First down for Aquinas on their own 20-yard line. 4.27 left in the third quarter. See what Deaver can do. And for you all that maybe don't know, this is run on a DVR, YouTube. Coaches are asking me if it was a push off. I could run it back, but I'd mess up the broadcast. You all can, you already know if it was a uh, interception, I mean, a uh, interference or not. St. Thomas has the ball. Deaver's going to give it off. Looks like a little cross buck action. Going to lose yardage. Loss of two, second and 12. Ryan and Miramar coach came over to see if it was a push off and I started talking about how on YouTube you can run the DVR and then I think he thought I was going to be able to do a reverse and I okay. said no but you fans replay. out there absolutely know if it was interference or not but that's history Deaver gives the ball up the middle boy they may have gotten it back I'm not sure Denzel King starting linebacker makes a big tackle stuffs that hole stuffs that gap just doesn't look like they have the energy. The linemen have their hands on their hips. Lost their mojo. Yeah, this is uh, the first time I had a chance to check out St. Thomas this year. Didn't get a chance to watch them on TV, but they just don't look the same right now. Maybe this is why the coach didn't want you to talk to the kids during the week. Deep throw. They're going to call interference, but there was good acting. Good acting job. Receiver was number six. And from the that was Samuel it. Bruce, and Samuel knew the ball was overthrown, way overthrown, but did a World Soccer Cup acting job and got the yellow carpet. You'll get an automatic first down. 
Wow. That's one way to get a first down, Ryan. Yes, it is. Well coached. <laughs> watching, watching too much uh, real football, as we say in America, soccer. <laughs> well, they got the ball over the 37-yard line. Deltron's in motion. Beaver's going to try to take off up the middle. It's no way. And that's not his quarterback style. As you can see so far, he just I don't think he has the speed to make those type of plays. Um, had a couple opportunities to do his own read and just doesn't have the speed to do it. He's more of a pocket type quarterback. He's going to drop back. Uh, look at the, check out the defense, but as you said before, you guys got these uh, linemen with their hands on their hips, and uh, he doesn't have much time tonight. Yeah, that was Brandon Morris once again bringing Deaver down. Give is off the right-hand side. Picks up six or seven yards close to the first down. Another flag thrown. Going to be a personal foul. It's going to stop the clock, 159 in the third quarter. Yeah, I'm going to think that's going on the Patriots' side. You got them on the sidelines. And guys, their uh, intensity is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty intense out there right now. Big-time rivalry game. Guys getting some mouths going, but hey. Well, if it is, that'll be 25 yards in total penalties. One on the pass interference. The Patriots are moving back. They can't make those kind of mental mistakes. No, they can't. Not at this point in the game. Just under two minutes left in the third quarter. Walking into the fourth quarter with a score of Miramar Patriots 12 and the Raiders only seven. And believe it or not, they made their way down the field. I wouldn't say because of things that they've done successfully, but um, they're fortunate enough to make their way down the field. Maybe we can see them put some points on the board. Well, it's first and 10. They're going to give off tackle to the right-hand side. There's pick up down the side. He made him take it into the end zone. I don't see a call by the official. Looks like he stepped out of bounds. And I believe uh, at one point he stepped out of bounds because I'm not seeing any uh, calls. I'm not for sure if that was Scarlett. Who were in the ball? That was Scarlett. That was Jordan Scarlett, one of our impact players for tonight's game, stomping his way and just tiptoeing down the sideline. Unfortunately, stepped out of bounds at one point. There you go, Jordan Scarlett, number 22. I said if he'd hit the edge tonight, he's going to pick up big yardage. And that's exactly what he did. Got to stay with him, Boyd. First and 10 from the 10 yard line, actually first and goal. Gives a Scarlet again off the right hand side. Gives a Jordan Scarlet tackled by LaBorce out of the second down. Brings up second down and goal. One twenty-five. the clock is moving in the third quarter. Nine to seven ball game. The Raiders are threatening. Second down and goal. Scarlett's 10 yards off the ball. Gonna take it and hit the left-hand side hard, but he's met by a host of Miramar players. Looks like that was Joey Diaz-Martinez. They caught him in the backfield, but his helmet came off, so he's got to come off field. Should be third down and goal. The band is kicking butt out here right now. I know they're getting fired up with this third down and goal. Hoping the four-yard line. They're hoping that St. Thomas doesn't put some points on the board, but from the looks of it, they might just do. Miramar's bringing everybody. They got Scarlett pinned in the backfield for a three-yard loss. Brandon Morris once again in the backfield making big plays for the Patriots. Backs him up, fourth down and, and I goal. And I forgot to mention, 
When I was out of practice, when I had a chance to talk to Brandon Morris, his nickname is the Mad Scientist because he is a genius when it comes to his academics. Well, Brandon Morris is playing some football today. I see the stands are shaking, the camera's shaking. This is fourth quarter football, 12 to seven. Are the Raiders gonna kick it? Or are the Raiders going for it? Getting exciting now, folks. Bring them all the way back down the field. Boy, that's quite a run. They've already been running enough. They just had to go another 99 yards the other way. And it looks like they're going to put, try and get three points on the board. And make it'll make this score. It'll put the Raiders down by just two points. Starting off this fourth quarter with a, a field goal attempt by the Raiders. Well, I have to agree with that. About a 28... Eight yard field goal attempt. See if the Patriots are bringing everybody up to block it. Kick is up. And it's good. It is good. And the Raiders get three points on the board, which makes it 12. Patriots and the Raiders got 10 points on the board with just 11.55 left in this big time rivalry game. The Raiders and the Patriots, not their best performance, but one to remember because Miramar is looking to put another W in the bag after three previous wins against St. Thomas. But will St. Thomas step up to the plate after a tough loss up in New Jersey and say, enough is enough. It's time to redeem ourselves. Well, Damari Simpkins will be able to take his offense back on the field. Quite a series by Brandon Morris. Just doing the number in the backfield. Pinning those Raiders back. Third down and goal from the three yard line. Great tackle in the backfield forces the Raiders to go for that field goal. We've got a baseball score, 12 to 10. See who's got it left in the fourth quarter. Be the Patriots or the Raiders. Kick goes out of bounds. They'll have perfect field position at the 35-yard line. Seems like everything is going wrong for the Raiders tonight. Doesn't look too good. I know Pilardi ain't going to be too happy about that. He's going to grab number 89, the kicker for tonight, off on the sideline. Maybe give him a peace of mind. Well, they're not helping him at all. Damari's going to have excellent field position. Absolutely. He's on the 35-yard line. Yeah, that doesn't help out with uh, field position. Damari's got a single back in the backfield. Bad snap off to the right side. Damari smartly jumps on it. And it's going to take him back as if wow. it was a touchback. And it's going to take him back to the 20-yard line. And uh, doesn't help them out. Not, not the best field position, what they could have started with, but reaching the first down will be the problem. That's correct. That was a tough one. Big loss. Second down forever. Mari fakes his own read and he keeps it himself and he doesn't go anywhere. If they don't turn this thing around, the Raiders are going to have great field position. Well, I'm hoping I don't get hit with a t-shirt. And as you can see, fans are up in the air trying to catch some t-shirts. 
We'll get them settled down. And hands and everything going through the screen. It's high school football, folks. 10-46 in the third, fourth quarter in the county. Wow, pass is incomplete. It's almost picked off, thrown behind receiver was Javon Durant. And it didn't even look as the receiver was really paying attention. It took him a while to get his head around. And I think Damari was making a decision to say, look, the safety's sitting right over top. There's no point in me throwing it down the middle. You're going to get jacked up. So I think they weren't on the same page right there. Well, they haven't had a whole lot of success punting the ball almost Almost blocked. I don't know how he got it off the ball. Snap, bounced on the ground to him. Raiders are going to have excellent field position. Boy, you've got the Patriots that took the ball at the 35-yard line, and I think the Patriots, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm behind his wall, he's going to get the ball back inside the 35-yard line. Yes, my goodness. You talk about taking advantage of an opportunity. The special teams, uh, the kicker, number 89 for St. Thomas, kicks the ball out of bounds, puts him, gives him great field position, unfortunately comes up with a bad exchange on the center's part, snaps it way out to the left. Damari has to chase it down, get down on the ball. He tries to make a big play the next play, and number 15 comes off the edge for St. Thomas and makes a huge play for St. Thomas Aquinas and just three and out. Patriots had to boot the ball back to St. Thomas Aquinas. I saw that close-up you have, and I saw them jumping up and down, trying to get something done. Give to the up back, picks up three or four. Number 32, Gerald Lane Jr., little scat back. Clock is running under 10 minutes. It's a 12 to 10 ball game. One field goal will put him ahead. Three-step drop, throws on the left-hand side. The jump ball, incomplete. No flag. Pass was intended for Judy, number eight. Well, and like you said earlier on in the game, I don't know if um, the backup quarterback has enough reps to be able to throw that kind of ball to uh, his receiver with confidence. So, you know, they're throwing a jump ball to a wide receiver that's probably not his tallest, more of a possession type receiver, and uh, unfortunately came up short. Should be third down and 10. Actually, third down and seven. Beaver's going to roll to the right-hand side. Throws behind, incomplete. Intended for number one, Jawan Harris. He was covered very well. It's going to be holding against St. Thomas. Going to move him up back 10 yards, which is going to help the Patriots out because if they're going to be in any position to kick a field goal, they're going to have to be inside that. 9.36 left in the fourth quarter. It's 12 to 10, Patriots. That's going to be a holding on the offense. It's going to push him back some. It'll bring up third down in about 20. More importantly, takes him way out of field goal range. Some very, very bad mental errors on both sides of the ball at the wrong time. A lot of mental discipline. Well, it's like I say in the beginning of the games, what's going to win this game? Discipline and special teams. And what have you seen tonight? A very lack of discipline on uh, both sides of the ball. And special teams have been all over the place. Three-step drop for Deaver. He's looking left. Nothing there. He's going to hold on to it way too long. And he's going to take another 10-yard loss. And there's just nothing there for this quarterback. He got two wide receivers. Late flag, Ryan. He got two wide receivers on the outside expecting some type expecting some type of jump ball. And as a quarterback, he just doesn't see it. Tries to take it outside the pocket once again. Doesn't have the speed to get outside and takes on a big loss. 
for the Raiders. There's a late flag. We're going to see who it's against. Personal foul against the Raiders. Wow, it's going to back them up another 15 yards. Very unlike the Raiders. They were inside the 35-yard line. Now they're back inside their own 35-yard line. Fourth down, 9-16 left on the clock, and they are down by two points. Perfect position for the Patriots to be in. Discipline and special teams. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, discipline and special teams. Or lack thereof. End over end kick. Caught at the 30-yard line. Picks up maybe two. That's Durant again. Can't make the moves you want to on this muddy field out there. Number five trying to make some moves. Made one of them miss, but you just got to keep those feet up under you, especially in these conditions. Well, you got a 12 to 10 ball game. Nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. Patriots have the ball. We're going to see if Damari Simpkin can sustain a drive, run that clock down, and maybe even put more points on the board. Last series, they had the ball at the 35-yard line, but they gave it back to the Patriots gave it back to the Raiders inside their own 35 yard line. Absolutely, most would say at this point in the game you need to solidify the win. You got nine minutes left on the clock. You would think the Patriots would try and run out the clock, but at this point, they need to think about putting some more points on the field. They need to get down the field. They need to put some more points regardless. Well, at this point, I wouldn't say just a field goal because that still puts them um, in, a, in a range of uh, winning this game, but this is huge right now, ladies and gentlemen, for both these teams. Damari picked up about three yards. Bring up second down and seven. Looks like there's confusion. Damari came to the sideline to see what the play was. Fakes his own read. He's going to try to get it. Boy, he is just flattened by Nick Boza, number 97, our impact player. There he is, defensive tackle number 97, Nick Boza. He did that three times against Bosco last week, but it wasn't enough. Second down, make that third down and 10 throws it to the right hand side short of the marker and that's unfortunate anyways yep and that's probably the fourth time I've seen him do that tonight Damari Simpkins on the pass and it's just over his head and I don't know if uh, like I said I don't know if it's off his back foot or he's just releasing it too high but he's not it, it's happened uh, multiple times tonight well, that's going to bring up a fourth down. They're going to have to get the ball back to St. Thomas. St. Thomas going for the block. It's blocked. St. Thomas picks up the ball inside the five-yard line. You knew that was going to happen. Big turnover. Special teams. What have you been talking about all night, Ryan? Special, Special teams, teams and discipline. And right there, they effectively won the special teams game. This could be huge for St. Thomas Aquinas. They've had a rough night all night long on offense and I wouldn't say the defensive side of the ball. Miramar's offense hadn't been the best. Uh, they haven't played at the best of their ability. Um, not too much tonight, but uh, this is huge for St. Thomas Aquinas. Only down by two points, 12 to 10, with 7.35 left in the game. If they put some points on the board, it could be a game changer, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Devers has got four shots at it. You know they're going to try to get it. They'll get it either way. They'll have a chance to kick it or punch it in. They've got big Scarlet back there. That big line, we're going to see who's got it. Give his Scarlet off the left-hand side. He's powering inside one-yard line. And this is huge. For the defense right now, my goodness. If they could do what they did about, I would say, what was it, the end of the third quarter when they stopped Scarlett down close inside the 10 yard line. If they can do that one more time, that will be epic. 
Looks like it might be on the two yard line, right in that sand bowl. You're absolutely right, Ryan. Seven minutes, counting under seven minutes in the fourth quarter. Gives the fullback close up the middle. Picks up about a yard off the right hand side. See where the referee marks it. Andre Hicks in there for the tackle. Doesn't look like he got anything gained on that one. That ball's out about the four or five yard line. Well, I know the coach is saying right now, look, we did it We did it before, we can do it again. If they keep trying to, I don't know, they might try to hit the outside right here. Scarlett's got the speed to do it, but who knows. Fumble ball. Fever picks it up. Fumble the snap. A here we go quick. again, fourth oh down. Gosh, a little quick. Trying to jump the gun a little too quick, and I think they're gonna send the special teams back out. Well, we're coming under six minutes. That's about the sixth fumble at snap by the St. Thomas Raiders quarterback. They're bringing a kicker out. They want to go for that one-point lead and under that, six minutes. And believe it or not, that could do it in this game. Kings up. And the kick is good. The Raiders take over by one point. It's 13 to 12. 532 left in the games. And the Raiders have finally taken the lead in this game. And Ryan, you've been right on target all night long. This game has been won and lost on special teams. Yes, it has. Like you said, 12 to 13, that one point could make a huge difference in this game. Um, the Patriots. They try to make a push, and it seems like in this fourth quarter they have made huge strides on the offensive side of the ball, coming up with things like first downs, which is unbelievable to say in this uh, type of game. St. Thomas versus Miramar, you would think first downs would be all over the field. They'd be a high-scoring game, but between the weather, between the discipline, between coming off both teams coming off some big-time losses, I mean, this is huge right now. I mean, at one point, it could be the difference in this game. And we're about to see what the Patriots can do. They're going to get the ball back with just 532 left in this game. And maybe they can put some points on the board. I am really surprised at the lack of discipline for both teams, uh, especially St. Thomas, a very well-coached team. Coach Trout is a well-coached team here at Miramar as well. Very unorthodox to see that kind of lack of discipline on both sides of the ball. Once again, folks, we're so happy that you're still with us. Bleacher.com fans. Florida GridironPreps.com. Florida High School Football.com. And Florida Varsity.com. We're glad we got the stream set up. We may have shut down the scoreboard. We'd rather you see it than know the score. We'll give you the score. It's a one point ball game, 532 left, 13 to 12 Raiders. Let's see if Damari Simpkins can move his Patriots down the field and make up that one point. And they're not going to give the Patriots a chance to return it. They know they got the speed, but it does give them pretty good field position. And I think they're going to open up this offensive drive on the 25-yard line, and hopefully they can, uh, excuse me, hopefully they can get the exchange from quarterback to center. And uh, maybe they can, you know, I'd like to see a, see a progression come down this field. Well, it'll be interesting to watch Bosa now to see if he turns it up. This is going to probably be the last series Patriots will have the ball. Damari's going to have to put some points on the board. But the Raiders will take the V and cut the curse. Bosa's after him. Flips it out there. Takes a good bounce. And it almost wow. looked like a, a double option on the play. And you're exactly right. Um... With 5.17 left in this game, the, the thing we would probably want the offense to do is run down the clock, take it down the field, get into field goal position, put some points on the board, and we'll walk away with a W. But at this point in the game, I don't think that's going to happen. Second down and 10. No gain on the play. Throws it down the right-hand side. Receiver's open, overthrows him. Wow, 
Right, he had two steps on the defender. Safety didn't have enough time to come across. Corner was one on one. He just had to put a little more air on the ball. Yeah, and it's tough to say if that was a waste of play or not, even though he overthrew the ball. Um, every possession, every point, every time is valuable at this moment. Third down and 10, 4.49 on the clock. Raiders are leading 13 to 12. Are they going to break the jinx? We're going to find out. we got four minutes and 49 seconds left and maybe only two plays left for the Patriots. Oh, it's a high throw. It's intercepted. Intercepted by number 52. Faulkner, linebacker. Senior linebacker makes the big play. That may just about put the coffin on it. They put the points on the board. We'll find out. It might be 436 left in this game. And Patriots come up with a big time loss. Bouncing off the chest. It looked like he had the ball caught. Bounce off the shoulder pads of the wide receiver. Go, popping up in the air, number 52, linebacker. Taking it the distance to bring them in just inside the 10 yard line and a possible touchdown or field goal. This is high school football primetime powered by HSPN South Florida. First and goal inside the 10 yard line. Give it to the up back around the left hand side. That's a touchdown. Number 29 takes it in. Henry Cole. That's a junior running back. He made it look easy. There's a penalty flag down. Let's see what it's called. And I think that penalty flag is going to be called on number 75 on the offense. He just uh, felt the need to take off his helmet to celebrate, and I don't think the refs are going to be too happy about that. I don't think the coaching staff is going to be too happy about that either. Well, let's see if they're going to keep the points on the ward. That's going to be a touchdown. They'll take you the ensuing kickoff. That makes the score 19 to 12 for the Patriots. 19 to 12 for the Raiders, excuse me, with 4.31 left on the clock. If they get this kick, the Patriots are going to have to score and go for two to tie this game. Yes, sir. I'll tell you one thing. I was waiting for him to cut it outside. Um, the past possessions that we saw him this close into the end zone, um, or this, this close into the red zone, they've just, they try to pound it up the middle, Miramar inside. They just are filling up the box. There's just no movement up front. First time, take it outside, guess what? Touchdown. You got 20 wow. points on the board for St. Thomas Raiders, and it's going to put, maybe put the seal on this game with 431 left, 20 to oh. 12. That was Devontae Cole. We haven't called his number all night. He's one of those players with a clean jersey. Maybe Coach wanted to put somebody in there to fire him up because he went untouched around the left-hand side for a nine-year scamper and a touchdown to put the... Raiders up by eight points with 4.31 left on the clock. A disappointing possession for the Patriots. Miramar, Miramar up the majority of the game just by one or two points at most. And St. Thomas coming up with some big time plays on the defensive side of the ball, linebacker number 52 coming up with the reception, the interception, I should say, bouncing off the receiver's shoulder pads and him taking it down to the red zone just inside of the 10 yard line. In result, a touchdown for the Raiders of St. Thomas Aquinas. Well, they took the 15 yard penalty on the kickoff. Patriots will have great field position, but they're gonna need a touchdown and two point extra version. That's a deep kick, almost back to the 10 yard line. Slipped and falls. Once there you again, go again, Ryan. There it is. Cutting on the inside foot. Trying to make some big time cuts by some big time players in the weather. 
and this field is just not going to let you do it. I mean, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, look at the field. I mean, you got mud, you got sand. Maybe it feels on the other side of the field, but I doubt it at this point. Um, it's been raining all day. If you don't live in South Florida, if you don't live in Florida, you don't probably don't know what I'm talking about, but it has been going at it all day long. Well, that was Tyler Cole, our impact, Tyrek Cole, our impact player. One of our impact players. Well, here we go, 423, the clock is running. Mari gets a pass reception out to the left-hand side. Stops the clock close to the 30-yard line. Yes, nice sir. reception. And the question is, can this junior quarterback, only coming in for the first time last game against American Heritage, coming off a big loss against Heritage, but can he bring this team back to victory with a and a two-point conversion? Only a six-yard gain, but he did stop the clock. Going to go with a fake zone read. Throws it to the right-hand side. Wide open receiver. He's still moving. Tackled inside the 50-yard line. Big time gain by the Miramar Patriots. Looks like Jackson Merced, number nine. First down for the Patriots. They're on the move. 4.15 on the clock. The clock has stopped. Inside the 46-yard line of the Patriots. Nice play. Fake the zone read. Threw it over the numbers. Wow. Almost a pickoff. Quick Stop pass. The clock. Yes. Quick pass out to the wide receiver. Slot wide receiver. Just a little bit too high. Doesn't come down with the ball. That's going to leave it to a second down in about 10 yards with four minutes left in this game. Down by eight points. Again, the Patriots put some numbers on the board to redeem themselves as they've been up this entire game. Mari's looking to his left-hand side. He throws it high again. Wide open receiver. Third down and 10. I know it's very frustrating for these wide receivers. As a quarterback, it is a big deal putting that ball on the numbers. They all can't be perfect, but they can be in a position where they're able to catch it at this point. That's about the fifth time um, we've seen that happen. And we got some, we got a little uh, excitement down there on the field. What in by the world? By the Miramar Patriots. Zoom in on him. That young player is going crazy. That's number 74. Bit of frustration on the field, unfortunately. Had to see that. Stuart Boyd. By their own teammates, and that is going to be big time. That's going to be big time for that young man. Unfortunately, he's going to probably be escorted off the field. He is out of the game. He is out of the game. And he's getting to a scuffle on the sideline with his own players. Not sure what that's all about. But he needs to move him off the field, a long ways off the field. 15-yard personal foul penalty. Last thing they needed. They're removing the ball. Young man losing his cool, even against his own teammates. I don't believe I've ever seen that. No, it's unfortunate, especially this late in the game. With, I mean, it is such an important time in the game. And uh, we know, especially at Miramar, their program is definitely not run that way. And uh, unfortunately, that player just uh, lost his head. I'm sure he's going to wake up in the morning regretting some of the decisions that he made tonight. Wow. That was 30 yards they walked off. And he's got two coaches that are escorting him off the field and he's still tugging. Well, Damari's done everything he could. One of his teammates bringing him back 30 yards with four minutes left. I'm not even sure what down it is. It's third down. And they've got to make it all the way inside the 40 of St. Thomas Aquinas for the first down. The clock starts. Damari scrambles out of bounds. About the 29-yard line. And that's going to put up a third down or uh, fourth down. Yep, fourth down. And very unfortunate um, that we had to see that. And a uh, player got escorted off the field, but just puts him in a terrible um Decision making, put them 30 yards back. I mean, it just it just went south real fast. 
It sure did, Ryan, and they were moving the ball. They're going to punt it away. 357. Hope to get the ball back. All St. Thomas Raiders have to do is burn the clock. Going for a return on this one. Nice kick and nice bounce. Ball's down at 23-yard line. The Raiders will take over. 3.44 left on the clock. They lead by a score of 20 to 12. And uh, no words can describe uh, this moment. Such a close game. A lot of mistakes made on both sides of the ball and just really takes the wind out of you at this point when you see uh, student athletes. You know, you can't, you know, you lose your cool every once in a while, but when it gets that far, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it is unfortunate. It took a lot out of everybody up here, the coaching staff, the fans as well. Rolling under three, 28. Raiders up by eight. Basically, they're going to look to run the clock out. And with three minutes left, you know, anything can happen at this point. But I know uh, if St. Thomas does solidify this deal, they're not going to be too happy uh, with this win. No, can't be. Big hit in the backfield. Scarlett tackle for a loss. Doesn't really matter at this point. We're under three minutes. In the 20 years I've been involved playing, coaching, broadcasting football, never seen for a player on their own team. Loses cool like that and go after his own teammates. Give it to the fullback, hit hard. And the defense, I'll think this defense has, they came to play tonight. Both sides of the ball have done an uh, outstanding job, really, uh, to hold the score to such a minimum, but the, the Patriots defense, I mean, they've done outstanding things tonight, uh, especially up against some of the top running backs in the nation. Well, it'll bring up fourth down and 10, Ryan. They're going to have to punt the ball, and they're going to get it back with good field position. See if they can put together a drive. Yes, they will, and they're going to call timeout right here. Yes, they did. They called timeout. Folks, if you're still with us, we want to thank our bloggers tonight and the fans that have been watching us from Bleacher.com as well as FloridaGridironPreps.com. Florida High School Football. That's FloridaHSFootball.com. And FloridaVarsity.com. Visit those bloggers. They'll have up-to-date scores, stats, and rankings. This is High School Football Primetime, powered by HSPN South Florida. High School Game Day, brought to you by Bleacher.com. No penalty flag. They'll have decent field position. And our impact player tonight, Tyreek Cole, on the short return. I know There's that time. Tyreek. Yeah, he was, uh, I know he was thinking about that one, saying, okay, can't make the same mistake I made last time, keep my feet up under me. Unfortunately, ran into uh, one of his athletes. But uh, Well, last week, Tyreek had a big punt return. 75 yards for a touchdown against Plantation. Whole different team down there. They scored 42 points. Yes, different mentality last week. And um, as you can see, the offense steps back out on the field with just two minutes left in this game. Miramar down by eight points with a score of 20 to 12. And we uh, got a new offensive line in the game. Well, they've got another shot at it. They look confused, but see if Damari Simpkins 
can get him in with two minutes left. There's Bosa all over him. Big Bosa making some moves tonight and see a couple wide receivers down the field, but Nick Bosa, one of our impact players, number 97. See him right there. 148, clock is running. Need to get up, get the ball going. Wow, St. Thomas took off. No whistle. Not too sure what happened there on that play. Timeout's called. I'm not sure if that was a trick or -ruski. It looked like a lineman picked the ball up. Miramar calls a timeout with one minute, 30 seconds left. Well, with just 1.30 left in this game, the Miramar Patriots are down by eight points. Just got a college score, Ryan. Nebraska Cornhuskers 17, the Miami Hurricanes 14. Well, we give a shout out to the University of Miami. Coach Ice Harris. Doing his thing. Had to follow, uh, gave us an opportunity to follow his former uh, Booker T. Washington Tornadoes last year. Taking his talents to the next level. Hopefully they come home with the W. Third down and 15, more important. One minute, 30 seconds, two plays. Damari's gotta do something. Pass is caught, but it only gets back to about the line of scrimmage. And I think that's one of the biggest things tonight. This is, this is we've seen more than once um, this offense put up some big time plays with gains of 10 to 15 yards, but they just don't cut it when you're getting all these penalties. Fourth down, last play of the game for the Patriots. They don't get something going. Lamar rolls to the right hand side. He throws it out of bounds on fourth down. Ball's gonna go over folks to the Raiders and that's gonna be it. Unless there's some miracle, they pick up a fumble. It's 20 to 12 with 58 seconds left. The Raiders are going to take this win and stop the jinx. Well, I know these players are uh, pretty disappointed right now on the Patriots side, not just at the situation that just happened, but with 58 seconds left, we can assume that uh, the Patriots will take the L tonight and the W will be once again restored to the St. Thomas Aquinas Raiders. It has been a long three years, I can guarantee you that. And uh, I know they're probably excited, not with this win, but um, they're, uh, they'll be excited to go home with a win, but probably not the best way they could have won tonight. Not at all, Ryan, and I'm sure Rocco's going to have them back over there and have some words before they get on the bus because this was not a typical Raiders football team tonight. Very undisciplined. I don't know what they need the rest, but they got the W. They caught the jinx. Clock is rolling under 46 seconds. Maybe the last play of the game. I think so, and a couple good handshakes down on the middle of the field. I know there's a big time rivalry. I know there's been a lot of tension the entire game, and uh, some penalty flags have been thrown, and I think that's gonna give it up. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are gonna sign off from here. HSBNSports.com, we're glad you can tune in with us tonight. And the Patriots take an L for the first time against St. Thomas Aquinas in three years. Maybe the other way around. Last, the Raiders. Last thoughts. You got it. You got it, the L. I was thinking L and W. No. Well, we're going to be here again next week. We appreciate all you folks watching us. We're at Miami Patriot, Miramar Patriot Stadium in Miramar, Florida. We'll be back next week with some more high school primetime football. This is Glenn Stout and Ryan Stout signing out. We'll see you next week. Snap, punt it. He's at the 50. He's at the 40. He's out of his feet.